Now, there have been a lot of reactions trailing your apparent arrest in London by the British authorities. Some have said that you were being witch-hunted by the APC, others that a petition was sent against you, and still others that you were being impersonated. Can you tell us the circumstances of your purported apprehension in London and what has happened subsequently and sort of clear the air? on air on that. Did you commit an offence for which you were being stopped? Thank you, Charles. One is, I was never arrested. I was never detained. And I did not commit any offence. I was stopped for a routine immigration check because there appears to be a duplication of my identity and all this lasted for maximum of 20 minutes and I was treated in what I do with all due respects just I lived in the UK from in the 90s say from 1993 until 2000 and five. I remember meeting you in London, Thank actually, you. in that period. Yes. Charles, not just that I lived there, from that 1993 till now is a period of 30 years. I have never been questioned, arrested, detained in any country in the world. I've never been, even been, for any reason, Found myself in any manner being questioned for any offense. I've not committed any offense. So it was a routine immigration check. And it lasted, like I said, less than 20 minutes. And I, I was actually given all the due respect by the border personality mm. that interviewed me who told me your identity is duplicated be careful and actually had to walk me through the what I can call the VIP process and everything and I have a written document from British government I, I've fact, seen that document thank you I yeah. it to you clarifying that, that the it was never detained and it, it was just a few minutes mm. question and everything and they were Nigerians because I arrived on British Airways so they were Nigerians who were clean up even what I was even worried that I was asked to just wait for a few minutes and when that happened I explained it to them and there was nothing but in the traumatized and everything because it's me people said I was detained committed an offense people said even committed several offenses and everything oh his company was closed he wasn't paying tax <laughs> charged for the years I lived in Britain never have I had any day been questioned and I can say it my taxes my days were duly paid in fact most times they have been refunded me money for overpayment I've borrowed money, I've done everything globally. Not one day did I default in any. If you find one default, then it's not Peter Obi. Well, I'm glad you clarified that point about the arrest. And in, in support of the point you're making, I have seen the letter from the British High Commission making it ineluctably clear that it was no such thing. Nevertheless, as you said, there was a huge hula baloo about that in nigeria i mean was that a humiliation for you or at the very least embarrassing no, that that all, all this was being talked about you and i mean no, even not, your, your the people who saw all. you I, I, would have, I, Charles, I would have made comment on it mm. earlier but these things happened during the what i call holy month where for me as a christian it was a fasting period and period of Ramadan and I felt it is not time to make comments. I only answered one question within that period when I was mentioned with trees because I, I felt it's a huge offense mm. and because it was actually mentioned 
where it shouldn't have been mentioned. Other than that, right. I just felt this is the clarification. And I've just shown you the letter. Yes. I won't go about telling everybody and showing everybody. Like, yeah, that is true. It just showed you where we've taken our rascality mm. to where people now come up with all sorts of things. Well, some people said you were deported from, no, from the UK. <laughs> but, but, but obviously not. No, but they said I was a routine check and I was allowed to go. Right. I, they even saw we attended churches and meetings and everything. I know, but that's where we have reached. But I mean, what sort of questions did they ask you when they nothing, took you in? Nothing. I was there. Nobody took me to anywhere. Right. I was just in front of a council. And were, I was asked a question and they said, there's something wrong with your identity. There's something wrong with your identity. Just give me a few minutes and that's it. And I, I sat there for a the few minutes, for about 15 minutes. He came back and said, your identity is duplicated. And if my identity is duplicated, you've lived their brother's identity theft, duplication, yeah, hmm. which I would say should actually must have originated from here. Well, I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad you've clarified that point. But there, there's also another question being raised about whether you are a dual citizen. As you said, you lived in London for a long time. I mean, do you have dual nationality, either British, American or elsewhere? Because I was reading somewhere that you were conferred with the honorary citizenship of Dallas, Texas in 2022. Charles, you know what that means? It means nothing. Yeah. Even one of the presidential candidates said it that, and that it means nothing. It just shows that, okay, well, if you come into this city, you're welcome. Mm. It doesn't even give you a visa. If you apply for a visa, it can't even, can even help you for your visa application. It means nothing. Mm. Charles, but I've never applied. Right. And I will never apply for citizenship of any other country. Yeah, but I, I, I'm in Nigeria. Right. But I, I believe in Nigeria. Hmm. I lived in the UK for a period of about 12 years. I had a permanent stay. So you were a permanent resident in the UK? But I had indefinite stay. Right. Okay. Which means I can stay there for the rest of my life. Yeah. But when I left the UK in 20. 25 i went back to them and said take your stay i'm no longer having and i go to the uk with visa mm. and also to be to clarify the fact that even if you were a permanent resident that doesn't make you a citizen of well i'm just telling you that yeah. even that stay i returned it right i've never applied and i will never as long as they live. Right. My family knows this, everybody knows that this. I was born in Nigeria. I'm a Nigeria. God created me in Nigeria. He would have made me an American, or a Japanese, or a British. But since he made it that I'm a Nigerian, I will want to live and die in Nigeria. Nevertheless, uh, Asari Dokubo, who is a, a well-known person from River State, says he can prove uh, that you are a citizen of the Solomon Islands and um, that the conditions for buying property there is that you must be a citizen. What's your reaction? Do you own property there? One, I don't know where Solomon Island. I've never been such a place in my life. You know, I don't know. I've never been there. Mm. You know, I've no reason to go there. Few places I've gone in, in the Caribbean are people, places like Haiti. I was in Haiti when they had the earthquake. I was a governor then. Mm. Everybody who is close to me knows that I've been to most troubled places in the world. So when there was hate, earthquake in Haiti, I went to President Jonathan. He stood there. I said, Mr. President, I'm going to Haiti. They had an earthquake. I want to go and help them to rebuild. He was even surprised. He said, Peter, I said, that's what I've done all my life. I've been to most troubled parts of the world. As I'm speaking to you, Mr. President, I've withdrawn my son from school. We're going there to Haiti. And I went there. The High Commissioner then will tell you, I even met some police officers from Nigeria mm. who were there, they will tell you. I even traveled with some of the people who, um, Bob Manuel, who used to be 
uh, one of the actors, he saw me and said, I said, I'm going to this place to help them rebuild. Mm. And I helped them to raise money then, over $200,000. Mm. So I've been to Haiti, and I've been to Barbados. So other than that, I can't remember. I don't know where Solomon Island starts. Right. I've never been there. I don't own a property anywhere else outside Nigeria except in the UK where I lived. Yes. Other than that, any other place that there's the property name of Peter B, it is fake. It doesn't exist. And I don't need it. Why would I own a property where I don't live? Well, I'm glad you clarified that point, but I'm afraid there are other things that need clarification. The Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, recently called for your arrest, accusing you of treason. Do you see any links between your activities lately and any treasonable offences? Charles is the height of rascality. The height of rascality. And it was even announced in Washington committed a treasonable offense and I'm in on a chair. and my minister went to announce it in Washington this is what I'm talking about we're not talking about waste in governance here people don't want to understand the amount it cost Nigeria for him to go and announce that in Washington can fix I can tell you I've been in government can build a block of six classroom in a primary school. I'm sure if you go to his village, there's so many places where children don't even have desk or classroom to go to school. And instead of using that money to go and do it, he used that money to go to Washington to announce of treason of somebody who is not a child. Mm. He doesn't need to do that. It is rascality of the house of that. This is the reason why we want a new Nigeria where things work the way it works in other clients. From there he went to London announcing the same thing. Well, I'm in Nigeria. He should have come to see me or invite me and say this is the offense. How did we, how did we get here? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, but I'm afraid it will remain a rhetorical question at the moment. Some of your followers, um, just moving on from that, um, who are known as obedience, have recently engaged in a sort of caustic exchange of words with Professor Wale Shoinka, the Nobel laureate, and he said that they simply don't accept any form of criticism. And I think it was around the time when he made the, the, the comments about fascism and your deputy, um, Yusuf Baba Dati, Dati Ahmed. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, Charles Prof is a respected, revered personality in Nigeria and globally. And I've always respected him. And he's a dear father to me. And for me, I was very, very sad that there was such a change. Some of the obedience, I must tell you, or people they, you know, mentioned that the obedience are not entirely people who are with us. The oppositions have also come into it and are using it at times. You mean other opposition parties? Other opposition parties. Right. But that is not to worry about. But I was very sad there was such a change between a respected father and a, But you have to understand this. These young people are people who have been so deprived by supposedly a system that is supposed to care for them. They've been pushed the wall. Even me, Charles, the way they even react when I say things. But I could see their pain. I could feel it. Because I live in the same system, Charles, that they are living in. I said it in Enugu two days ago. I said, listen, I live in this town 
I went to jail in Enugu as a student, University of Nigeria, Soka, and paid two thousand six hundred and something naira for 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 a, a Volkswagen car. And within two years, Umano Motors in Soka sold a five hundred five to me at two thousand seven hundred naira. Sorry, at six thousand. It was something Nara in the same country. I remember Ozuma not telling me that all the, that they, they have too many orders from so many lecturers, so my own will be delayed. If you go and see people like Professor Wala, my lecturer, then they are driving new cars. It's some society where we lived, everything was working. All of a sudden, these young fellows now live in, in what you can consider a worse situation. So at times, you know, there's issues. I will make my own comment in it that Prof remains a revered father. And I'll keep respecting him for that. And of course, the young obedience I feel for them. I wish you can see what they're saying. I wish you can feel what they're feeling. The pain just that go around these young people. There's nothing the society is offering them. Well, it's not just a Even when they try to do it on their own. Yeah. This is a place where if you carry today you're moving around with laptop. You are arrested. And labels also of names. This is a place where people are thrown into jail for even making comments. These are places where people, all sorts of things are made on these people. When people who have stolen billions of countries' money, done worse things, are moving around, being celebrated, being used as an example to them. Well, on the back of what you're telling us, today is, of course, Labor Day or Workers' Day, and Nigeria marks the day amid rising unemployment, which kind of relates to the people that you're talking about, because a lot of the people who are most affected by unemployment are young people, and many of them are part of the obedient movement. What is your message about that? Well, Charles, what message can you give them? Which country of our size that you know today it's going through what we're going we have almost 40 percent unemployment and 65 percent youth unemployment when you talk about one to three million people being grouped as multi-dimensional poor which percentage of these are young people in their productive age doing nothing without knowing where the next meal will come from and nobody cares about them and and that's what is happening everywhere and again if i try to say something you will even see where i said i will start fighting poverty from the north and people say oh no he's insulting people from the north even where Nigerian Bureau of Statistics said that out of this 133 million people, 86 million is from the north. And I say that's where we have vast or cultivated land, and I believe that we can make more money from agriculture and we're making for more oil. And the only way to put this apart of poverty is to invest in these resources and invest in them and everything. So for me, I feel for them. So that's how you think we should start reducing unemployment, is it? Um through agriculture as a first step or, or what is your sort of what are your thoughts on you unemployment? Move the country from 
consumption to production. And then you start the basic thing is agriculture. And you move it into manufacturing and into exports. The country is not doing anything. The country is not producing anything. The population is increasing. You're not doing anything. Just as a simple thing, and I can just give you a simple example. In 2012, we're about 162, 2011, we're about 162 million. Our export is about 130 billion dollars. Today, 2021, we're already over 200 million. We're about 210 million. Our export was 40, about 70, 47 billion. So can you imagine in 2011, we have about 130. In 2021, we're about 47. When our population have moved from about 162 to 2010, in 2012, our export was about 145 billion dollars. In 2020, as so at that time, we're about 167 million in 2012. In 2022, we're not about 213 million. Our export last year, if I look at Nigerian brothers, is about 26 point eight trillion, which if you convert it with five four forty five official rate, it's actually about sixty billion. So we couldn't even do half of where we are in twenty twelve. What does it show? You're not doing anything. We have here. An average container importation, just using container, not even using the containerized goods, we are now above one million. I think it's about what I read last time is about one point five million approximately. Charles, several of these, up to seventy or eighty percent, go back into no other country. If you decide today that you have 1.5 million containers coming into Nigeria and all of them must leave, go back with some form of export. Put it on average of about $20,000 per container going back with goods. That's $30 billion. So if, for example, 50% of this goes back empty, you lost $15 billion for a country that needs every dime. That's a very interesting point. So Oh my goodness, I can listen to this man all day and never be and never be tired of listening to him. This is the kind of man you should reckon with. This is the kind of leader Nigeria needs now. This is a personality that can lead a country forward. Like listening to what his ideas and everything like, oh God, we cannot miss this man. His integrity is top notch. He is a man that has been found with nothing. Then. He is a capable human being, a man with credibility and accountability, and he beats his chest to it that if you find anything outside other than what he has offered or what he has said about himself, that means it is not him, Peter Opi. Who among our leaders can say this? Oh my goodness. Like, I can listen to this man and never be and never be tired of listening to him. His wisdom is 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 beyond comprehension. Like seriously, I just don't get it, guys. Like so he has cleared uh, the air. He has come out to clear the air concerning the alleged arrest that we had of and concerning dual citizenship, like you guys know, being lived all his life outside the country. There was this um an interpretation that he must have acquired a dual citizenship, but he says no to this. 